In this video I will show you how to read a vernier caliper in metric. Okay, so only metric will be considered and uh, along the process we will measure everyday objects like the pencil and the pin in the picture. We will also measure saw set on this uh, saw blade here at the bottom of the picture. Before we measure anything, uh, parts of the caliper. Just get with the pencil and the saw blade. Oh, please bear with me throughout the clip. Uh, the caliper is uh, highly refle reflective, so wherever I position my hands, it's casting a shadow differently. It's a difficult shot. Just uh, bear with me and wait for the uh, uh, camera to focus. Uh, it's going to be worth your time. Okay, parts of the caliper. Caliper has uh, big jaws. This would be the two jaws on the caliper, okay? And it also has two little spurs here. What are these for? The jaws are for outside measurements, like here is this pen, and you can take an outside diameter with it. Just wait for it to focus. There, you can take a measurement outside diameter. With these spurs here, you can do an inside diameter, like that. On, a, on an object that's hollow, there, inside diameter. And with the end of the caliper, you have a little uh, metal rod that's uh, coming, it's kind of sliding on the back side of the caliper. You can see how it is, it's super simple. Okay, and with this rod, you can measure depth in uh, objects. Uh, like this one. Okay, what's this one? This is for holding staples. Okay, so basically, this is how you can measure depth with the caliper. Okay, so those are the also the functions of a caliper and what you can do with it. You can measure uh, inside diameter, outside diameter, and uh, depth with the jaws, the spurs and the uh, extending uh, metal rod at the end. There is a little uh, thumb screw here at the top of it. When you take a measurement of something, you can tighten the screw, get rid of the thing you're measuring, and, uh, and now you can read your caliper in your hand or on a bench so that the object that you measured is not uh, messing up your measurements. And you can put it down flat and uh, work with the caliper on flat. So those would be real quickly parts of the caliper. One more feature on the caliper is that there's supposed to be a gap here and there is a gap here. So let's just zoom in there on the jaws. Just wait for the camera to focus. Oh, there we go. Between these jaws here there is a gap you can see through it and the purpose of that gap is that if you're measuring uh, cylindrical objects that have been uh, cut recently and uh, the edges of the cut are uh, not nice, uh, those metal burrs don't interfere with your measurement. Okay? You can also uh, uh, you can also see how it works with uh, measuring uh, uh, tapered things like this, like a saw blade when we get to measuring a saw set. Okay. Now the numbers. Okay, those are parts of the calipers, not the numbers. On a caliper, you have a stationary main scale. The main scale doesn't move. On the bottom here, you can see numbers in centimeters and lines for millimeters with the fifth every fifth millimeter line longer than the previous four. And on the top of the caliper, you can see lines for inches. Don't worry about those. This is about reading of Bernier caliper in metric. On the uh, other side, on the other, uh, the moving part of the caliper, because the other part is the moving part. So on the moving part of the caliper, you can see another set of numbers. And uh, don't worry, don't worry about inches. These are millimeters here. You can see 
10 lines on it. Let me just tilt it a little bit. There. No, you can see uh, 20 lines on it actually. Uh, 10 of them numbered. And uh, 10 not numbered or so. And you can also see the uh, range or accuracy of the caliper, which says that's not half a millimeter, that's five hundredth of a millimeter. Okay, five hundredth. And at the end of the caliper here, you can see that it's a, no, you can kind of see that it's a six inch or a 15 centimeter caliper. Okay, that's how it's sold in stores. It's a six inch caliper or 15 centimeter long caliper. Okay. This moving scale works with the main scale. And when the caliper is set properly, the zero on the main scale, there, the hairline with the that belongs to the zero on the main scale lines up with the hairline of the zero on the moving scale. And when the jaws are closed, like that, uh, there should be perfect alignment there. These three screws here, it's kind of hard to get a shot at uh, on this one. There are three little screws here that you can take out and uh, remove or loosen this uh, moving scale because every so often if you knock it out of alignment you're going to have to put it back so that the numbers line up again. Please notice that only the hair lines for the zeros line up. Those ones should be and have to be offset. Those ones should be and must be misaligned even to an even greater degree. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see this intentional misalignment here because this is key to reading a caliper accurately. Let me just tilt it, just bear with me and focus again. There we go. Okay. So, those hair lines, that one and that one, they must not line up. Only, this, only the hair lines for the zeros must line up. And consequently, those will be also out of alignment. So will those, 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 and the rest of the lines. Uh, you can see that the greatest amount of misalignment is halfway down the moving scale and then those ones are getting closer and closer to perfect alignment again until those ones are really closely aligned and there should be a perfect alignment between the last zero here on the moving scale with one of the numbers just any one of the hair lines on the stationary main scale okay what basically uh, happens here and this is how the caliper works this main scale the main scale will give you the whole numbers every millimeters and the moving scale numbers give you tenth of a millimeter or five or half a tenth of a millimeter okay and half a tenth of a millimeter is five hundredth of a millimeter so what happens here if you just ignore these lines for a sec and just work with the concept of tenth of a millimeter what happened is uh, that one millimeter has been divided into ten equal parts and those ten equal parts have been offset on this uh, moving scale and uh, and this way the difference between the tenth are greater and make reading a tenth of a millimeter easier. Okay, let's uh, actually measure something and uh, I'll show you how this works. Uh, okay, let's measure this pin. I'm gonna put this pin here between the, let's just zoom out, between the jaws of the caliper, like so. So it's mounted and I'm gonna tighten this screw on top I'm gonna pull out the pin 
put a caliper down so we can take a decent reading on it. Just bear with me, I'm gonna zoom in and this is gonna be some extreme close up. Okay, now the first number, let me just focus it. There we go. Okay, I know the picture is dark. Uh, how about? Yeah, that's somewhat better. Okay, now let me just get to the board and uh, watch me on this one. The first number is your whole number of millimeters and it's coming off of uh, looking at looking at which one of these lines was passed by the moving scale. Which one of the millimeter lines was passed by the zero hairline on the moving scale? Okay, you can see that the uh, amount of displacement here doesn't even add up to one whole millimeter. Okay, therefore, your first digit for the ones is this zero is in the ones place value and it is a zero because it's not even one full millimeter okay the diameter of the pin is not even doesn't even add up to one whole millimeter to get tenth of a millimeter you're gonna have to find find an alignment between the stationary scale and the moving scale. So, the 500th line on the this 500 line, 500th of a millimeter line doesn't line up with any of the hair lines on the stationary scale. So that's not good. Next one. The 1 10th millimeter line on the moving scale doesn't line up with any of the millimeter lines on the main scale. I'm not going to use it. Next, the two tenth millimeter line doesn't line up with anything on the main scale, so we're moving over. The three tenth millimeter line on the moving scale doesn't line up with anything on the move on the main scale, but the uh, displacement is getting uh, closer and closer. The four tenth millimeter line is kind of close, but uh, still doesn't line up with any of the millimeter lines on the main scale. The five tenth millimeter line almost lines up with one of the hair lines on the main scale, but not yet. And if we look at this, and if, whoa, oh, sorry guys, and if we look at the 6 tenth millimeter line, I say that's in perfect alignment with one of the millimeter lines on the main scale. Okay, because this one lines up perfectly with that one, and on this one you can see that there is a little corner there that half the line or a quarter of a line is uh, on the main scale is a little bit over that way and the same difference can be observed there this is perfect alignment here and this is where your tenth digits come from you record the tenth digits and that's the end of the measurement on this one the pins outside diameter is 0 0.6 millimeters or six tenth of a millimeter. Okay, let's measure something else. Let's measure the pencil now. I'm just gonna zoom out. Oopsie, I'm just gonna zoom out like that. Thereabouts. I'm gonna reset it and let's measure the pencil. How thick is the pencil? So grab the pencil, make sure that the uh, jaws are clamping the material well tighten the thumb screw, remove the pencil straight without prying the jaws apart. Okay, and let's uh, zoom
zoom in there and uh, see what we've got. Okay, let me just uh, erase the previous measurement from there. And maybe zoom in a little bit closer. See if I tilt it. Aha, uh -huh, it's a better light. Okay. Thereabouts. I'm just gonna put it in the middle of the picture so you guys can see the action. Alright. Let's get the whole numbers first. Oh, huh, just gonna get rid of these two arrows. There. Okay. The whole number of millimeters is again same procedure. The zero hairline on the moving scale, you have to count which uh, whole number of millimeters has it passed. Okay, this is where it started. The alignment was perfect here. One, two, three, four, five, six millimeters. Okay, there's your whole numbers. Six point. That's your ones digit. Okay, six millimeters, it's six point something. It's a little more than six and a little less than seven. Okay, now we need a tenth digit. So for that, we're gonna look at the moving scale to see which one of the hairlines on the moving scale line up with any of the hairlines on the main scale. So it is obvious that the first one doesn't line up with anything. It is obvious that the second tenth doesn't line up with anything. Same story for the third one, or the fourth one, or the fifth one, sorry guys, or the sixth one, or the seventh one. It doesn't line up perfectly with any of the lines on the main scale. The eighth one is getting closer. Let's see what we've got here. I say we have here a fairly nice alignment with the ninth tenth of a millimeter. But I am also considering one one of these lines, one to the left and one to the right of the ninth. And uh, and I say that's definitely off. That's definitely off. That's definitely off there. That's definitely off. That's almost good. I'm gonna go with the ninth. Yeah, I'm gonna go with nine tenth. So the pencil thickness is zero point. Sorry, six point nine millimeters. Okay. Now I'm gonna set the scale uh, differently so that uh, we have an alignment with uh, a different alignment like uh, how about like that okay. just for practice and only for the tenth and uh, hundredth digit I uh, altered the alignments a little bit so uh, these ones don't line up and I uh, and I try to uh, make it that those don't line up and those ones are off a little bit you can see it's pretty hard to see, even even with this magnification, that I intended this hairline to be in perfect alignment to that one. So therefore, uh, whatever digit you have for the ones, uh, the uh, tenth digit comes from this one because this is the closest to it, nine. And what number is between point nine and uh, and the uh, and the next whole tenth, you've got 500. Okay, these ones are always 500. The numbers here are 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9, 0 0.95. Okay, that's how, these, that's how the, uh, the numerical value for these hairlines work. That's why the finest uh, amount, the finest measurement you can take on this one is, is 500 of a millimeter. There, I dragged it in view so you can see it. Five hundredths of a millimeter is the uh, upper limit of the reading accuracy on this uh, Vernier caliper. Lastly, let's measure saw set. Saw set is a concept 
on every saw blade, and this is again a difficult shot. Let me just zoom out because the uh, metal is uh, very reflective and the edge is such a little target that it's extremely hard to focus the camera on it. The concept is that the blade of the saw is narrower than the teeth of the saw, so the blade doesn't get cut, doesn't get stuck in the saw curve. When you're cutting through material, uh, the blade shouldn't be wider, definitely, than the teeth, and uh, the saw set is the difference between the thickness of the blade and the thickness of the teeth. Let me just uh, show you that there is a saw set. If I just zoom out and focus the camera, just bear with me. Maybe focus a little bit this way. Okay, just bear with me. This is really, really hard to see, but you can see a little bit of a gap here. You can see that the blade is also making a sound because the jaws are clamping to the widest point of the blade, the teeth. And you can see at the back of the blade here that there is a super tiny gap there. Okay, we're going to measure the gap now. How do we do that? Okay, we're going to measure just the blade itself like so. Just bear with me. I will just set the camera and focus in. Okay, we're going to measure the blade, the thickness of the blade, just like that. Set the thumb screw. So I was clamping the blade like that. We're going to take a reading on the blade's thickness and then we're going to measure the teeth and then we'll do a subtraction. So let's see what we've got here for the thickness of the blade. Thereabouts. Okay. There, nice and sharp. Okay. So let's do again. Same procedure. Which one of the lines on the main scale has the zero line passed on the moving scale? It passed the first one, so there's your uh, one digit, one point. It just passed the first millimeter line there, but hasn't passed the second millimeter line there. Therefore, the measurement is going to be one point something. Okay. Let me uh, take a look at the tenth digit there. And uh, which one of the hair lines? on the sliding scale lines up with any of the numbers, any of the hairlines on the main scale. And I see if it doesn't slide off, we've got a pretty good alignment thereabouts. Sorry guys. There. Okay, if you look at the sliding scale, the uh, four tenth is somewhat misaligned, the six tenth is somewhat misaligned, it's uh, pretty close to uh, that one is off, that one is off, it's a 1.5 millimeter measurement there for the for the thickness of the blade, saw blade. Now we're gonna have to measure the teeth of the saw. Let me just zoom out. How the measurement is taking place. I'm clamping in only there. I'm clamping in only the uh, teeth there, and uh, when I have it, tighten down the the uh, thumb screw here. There. Okay. Just tilt it a little bit, and we're almost done. Okay, come along. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. 
there. So this was the blade and the teeth. Okay, again, same procedure on the sliding scale. How many whole millimeters has been passed uh, in comparison to the uh, main scale? It's the same thing, one point something. There is your one digit because the zero is between the one and the two millimeter, first and the second millimeter there. So we are rounding it down. It's one point something. Okay, let's see which one of these line up. Those are off, those are off, those are off. There's going to be an alignment further down the road there. I'm just going to reposition it this way that you can see it and uh, that's a pretty good angle there fairly well lit so that one is off that one is off that one is getting close that one is really close that one is uh, looks good let's just check it from the other side that's off that's also off I'm gonna go with the 7 tenth so the teeth are 1.7 millimeter uh, width we measured so therefore after a subtraction we can conclude that the saw set on this uh, saw blade is two tenths of a millimeter yeah, that's how to work with a vernier caliper in metric just uh, get out there and practice